So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. I am so excited to be joined by an acting icon in the form of Angela Griffin. Angela, welcome. How are you? Yeah, oh, I'm really well. Thank you very much. I love that acting icon. <laughs> now, I mean, there, there is so much for us to talk about. I mean, for you, let's start off. Where did it all begin for you? Where did the love of acting come from for you? Um, for me, it came um, at a really, really young age. Um, I started at a children's theatre um, uh, school when I was five, actually. Um, it was a, it was actually uh, childcare for my mum because <laughs> she was working on a Saturday. So her, one of her best friends took me along to this acting workshop and I just, I fell in love with it there. There was, it, the fact that I could pretend to be something else and people believed me, like I'm a duck and they believed I was a duck. Um, I'm an old age pensioner um, from Liverpool and, you know, I would transform and then people would believe me and the idea that I could slip into other people's lives, I suppose, and feel for a minute what it was like to be them was, um, yeah, it was pretty intoxicating. I really, really, really um, enjoyed it. And then obviously, you, you, I think your first big acting role was, of course, Coronation Street. So for yourself, going into such an iconic soap and it being kind of one of your first sort of big acting roles what was that like because that must be a lot to get your head around yeah I think it was I was 16 um when I started in Coronation Street um I had done a couple of jobs before and I think that they had put me in good stead so luckily when I went to Coronation Street it wasn't my first time on set um I'd done a couple of kids series before and so when I walked on set I knew who the props guy was and I knew who the cameraman was and what a lighting guy was and what a grip was and some of the things that you know normally at 16 you wouldn't know I kind of I kind of knew so I went on to Coronation Street a bit not blase but I'd just done my GCSEs I was waiting for my GCSE results um got my GCSE results was working at Burger King went to college got Coronation Street da, 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 and it was like it was just like that it was just another thing that was going on um and so I think at 16 as well you don't necessarily I certainly didn't understand what an institution Coronation Street was so I did just kind of walk on there going because I only had one one episode I had like two or three lines one episode and that was it so I didn't think I was going to be there for six years, which is what it ended up being. Um, so, yeah, it, it it was good in a way because it didn't, I wasn't intimidated by it because at the time it, it didn't feel as big as what it ended up becoming. I mean, did, because I mean, I kind of get the impression maybe not, but did you find when you first walked onto the cobbles, was that strange or was it, were you, as as a child, was it kind of like, oh, I'm here, it's all right. What was literally that like? That, it, it was literally that, it was at the time coronation street i wasn't their market i wasn't their demographic of person to be watching the show so i knew what it was you know and i knew what brookside was and i knew what eastenders was and they were they were the soap operas and i just i just and i, I am really grateful for it now but i just did not get what a big deal it was in fact i'd be more intimidated now walking onto those cobbles than what i was at 16 definitely and I mean, soap operas get a lot of flack, I feel, but they are some of the best training grounds for actors because you have to kind of learn yeah. things so quickly. Um, you did actually go back briefly back in, I think it was 2019, to do a little bit. Um, would you like to go back sort of more permanently or is that not likely? It's not likely, I'm going to be honest. Um, I have to be careful about when I say things like that because if I say like, Oh, yeah, do you know, we never say never. It becomes a headline. And all of a sudden, it's like, Angela Griffin is begging for a role to go back to Coronation Street. And, I'm, you know, there's such a big, massive space in my heart for it. It was an incredible time of my life. And it was the springboard for everything that's come after it. And when I went back in 2019, it was... Oh, it was, it was quite emotional, actually, because there was a lot of people who were still there from when I'd been there. 25 years previous um and it was really emotional um and I was really pleased to be facilitating Ali Mardell's um story so that she kind of got this much bigger story at the end of it and I, I quite like that I still had a connection within the street um but in the near future there's that no she's not Fiona's not going back no but one never of, say that. No. <laughs> 
Now, I mean, there's so many great shows. We'll talk a little bit about Waterloo Road in a moment. But the other show I wanted to sort of briefly touch upon is a show which you did back in the early 2000s. I loved it and feel that it should have gone on for longer was Down to Earth. Um, for you, what was that like being a part of that show? Because you kind of came in a little bit later on. So, I mean, an amazing cast. And it was just a lovely, feel-good show. So what was it like to be a part of that? Yeah, it was. And it was the first time I was kind of um, joint leading a, sh a show. So um, Pauline Quirk and Warren um, Clark were the leads. And they'd done like three series, four series before myself and Ian Kelsey came in. And um, I couldn't believe I got it, actually. I was really, I went. I was up against a few friends for, for that job. And I was so pleased to get it. Um, and I absolutely loved shooting the first series of it, the first series that we did. It was very... Um, it was so much of it was shot kind of down in Devon. It was, we kind of picked up halfway through the series. I love working with Ian Kelsey. And I think it was an independent production company originally when I did it. And it felt, it felt quite judged. And then when we came back to do the next series, it wasn't an independent production company anymore. It was in house and all the budgets had been slashed. And it was like, oh, what's happened we was this kind of big zhuzhi show and then everything's being kind of like crushed down um but it was lovely and then denise welsh um joined and ricky tomlinson joined um and zara and dominic cooper and you know that was interesting i love watching people who i've worked with when they were kids and then they just become hollywood movie stars love it um so really enjoyed that but then i we got to the end of that series and the night before the rap party, I did a pregnancy test and I found out that I was pregnant and had to go to the rap party, which I'd really been looking forward to because we'd been shooting for quite a long time. It had been quite a, um, a heavy shoot, um, knowing full well that the chances of me being able to come back for another series were zero, but not being able to say anything to anyone because I was a day pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And not sadly, because obviously I've got, you know, my beautiful, beautiful daughters. Um, but it did mean that when the next series came about, uh, myself and Ian didn't, didn't go back. I, I was mean too busy. <laughs> <laughs> now in one person that you seem to have worked with a lot and i don't know if this is intentional but yourself and denise welsh seem to appear in the same shows a lot is that is that intentional yeah. or does that just happen by accident no absolutely not intentional and it's amazing because there's some other like like northern actors where i go oh i should why have i never worked with them how come our paths have never crossed and then other ones so denise welsh is one of them Jason Merrills is another person, and Tamsin Outhwaite. They're three actors that I think I have worked with the most repeatedly. Um, but it is just, it's pure luck. It never, ever gets, um, yeah, I think me, in fact, actually, you know, myself and Tamsin have, have engineered it to work together twice, actually, out of the four times that we've worked with each other twice, we had a saying, like, you know, we, we were, were part of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, the very lovely Denise, since I was, she came into Corrie when I was, I think she, I was about 19. Um, yeah, I was about 19 and um, yeah, lovely little Matty um, would come in as well. And then, yeah, worked with her all the way up until Dunbreeding, which was in 2020. And we must also mention Walkley Road, which is a series that obviously you both started on um, back in 2006 together. You're now obviously back on that show, which loving the new the new rerun and all the sort of new reincarnation of it w was it an easy easy kind of process for you to go back to that show or was there hesitation um initially there was a hesitation because what i didn't want to do is you don't want to go back and just do the same thing over and over because it's just boring <laughs> It's just boring to do that. You know, you become an actor so that you're transforming continuously. You know, you want to play different things. You want to explore and investigate different things and different, you know, mindsets of a, of a person. And um, and so when the first, no, when I first heard the, the rumours of, oh, it's going to come back, didn't even enter my head. It didn't even enter my head to, to let me just put on, do not disturb. Do not disturb. Um, it didn't enter my head to um that I, that I would go back and then uh the lovely exec producer Cameron Roach then 
um got in touch with it to say we are bringing it back but it's different we want it's it would be a different experience for you we really want to move the character on um you know put in a very different situation and and then it became really like yes that is i'm i'm up for that i'm definitely up for that you know kim campbell as head teacher is such a huge is a seismic move for her in terms of um her career um, but also, you know, why would she do that? What would make her get there? And I loved the reason why that happened. And then, yeah, I shot a couple of series of that. And then I, you know, said, please, can I direct it? And they went, um, OK. And then I did it. And they went, yeah, OK, do another one. Um, and then I'm due to start directing another one in a couple of weeks. So does that mean we won't be seeing you as much in front of the camera? Um... On Waterloo Road, yes, it does mean that. It does mean that. Um, it's an ever-changing show. Um, there needs to be room made for new people to come in, um, both students and teachers. Uh, it's never personal. It's just that is the cycle of a school. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's Kim will reduce. She's still there. She's still knocking about, but um, her life is also changing. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see when the next series comes out. You'll, you'll, when the next series comes out, you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, people are excited because, obviously, Jason Manford has been announced as the new head teacher. Yeah. For you, you must be excited to get to work with him. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. I, like, I just spent, like, um, a bit of summer with him. Uh, not summer, uh, spring with him. It wasn't spring. We film it like it's spring, but it's not spring. It was November, December, January. I spent with them um, with the very lovely Jason Manford. Um, yeah, well, he's just brilliant. It's what a, what a lovely, lovely, lovely man. Um, very lucky on the show to get um, good, good cast members, good team members in. Um, but yeah, he was um, he was good. He was funny. And I mean, one of the other shows I just want to touch upon briefly, I mean, I had a, a chat briefly with Tams Nowthway a few months back and she was about to head abroad, wasn't allowed to say where. Um, we now know that obviously you all went to uh, Malta to Malta. film a, a brand yeah. new series with Joe Joyner as well. So what can you tell us about this new Channel 5 drama? Because it, it sounds amazing. Oh, we can talk about it now. We can talk about it now. In fact, that's what my next interview after this is about. The We're kind of about to launch the... Um, the premise of it um so the wives is about a family the morgan family um who are the morgans are but uh, the sons of quite a well-to-do family and they've all got married and the wives us um are all sisters-in-law and we've all been going to we've all got these homes in malta we've all been going for years um but unfortunately a real tragedy happened and we come into the start of the series and there's been a tragedy and one of the wives is no longer there. And so it's watching these women deal with the emotion of that, the family, um, the family fallout of, of, of um, Annabelle not being there anymore, but also about these women's friendships, about how as you move on, your kids move, you know, grow up and they move out and what the, where does that leave your relationship? So it's kind of through the prism of this disappearance, but really it's kind of, um, it's a, a look at, at female friendships really, which there just is nothing like that on TV, you know, is everything's, you know, an inspector, everyone's got a detective and so on. So it was really refreshing, really lovely. And because, Tamsin is already a friend. We already had that shorthand immediately. That chemistry was immediately there. And, and Joe Joyner, I think Tamsin's worked with her before, actually. Um, I know her, I knew of her, and I've socialised with her, but never worked with her. And um, I watched the first couple of episodes yesterday, and it's really good. It's really good. And also, you can just really see the chemistry between the three of us as well, which is... You know, you can't buy it. I mean, Channel 5 is really doing some amazing stuff at the moment. Some great dramas. A lot of stuff filmed overseas. And it just looks so, I want to say cinematic. That kind of feel of just really yeah. crisp and fresh. 
for you, A, what's it like to get to go and work abroad? I think many people are jealous of you on that. Um, but also getting to work yeah. on this, what, what was that like? Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, I, I literally, I think I finished filming on Waterloo Road on the Tuesday and I flew to Malta on the Friday and it was February. So I left rainy Manchester and went to sunny Malta and it was just brilliant. I've been so lucky that I've had quite a few jobs abroad over the last like five or six years. I've done Mallorca a couple of times. I've done Ibiza. I've done Canada. So it's really lovely that someone actually pays you to be somewhere else um, in the world and puts you up in a hotel or an apartment and the sun is shining and, you know, the food is fresh and it's it's great. So I was very felt very, very lucky. And they do quite a lot in Malta. Um, Madam Blank Mysteries is out there. Gladiator is out there. So there's a really good um, uh, infrastructure for filming out there. So you know, sometimes you can go places and, you know, no one's seen a film set before and it can be a bit, but they're really used to it out there. Um, so it was fab. Slightly different rules to the UK. So working slightly longer hours, you know, you, they pack it all in. So it was a really big, heavy schedule. I didn't get to see as much of Malta as I would have liked to have done, in all honesty. I spent a lot of time on set rather than. Um, but it was to work with people who you actually like with with a, a professional set of people who really know what they're doing is great. It's really great. And you're right, Channel 5, uh, they're making things at the moment. You know, there seems to be this, you know, Doctors has been cut, Hollyoaks has been cut, Holby City has been cut. You know, there's all these kind of mid-dramas that, that, have, uh, that have disappeared. And so it's nice. You know, the high-end stuff's brilliant. It's fantastic. But I'm not Benedict Cumberbatch. You know what I mean? So um, I'm not necessarily, I'm not Gary Oldman. I'm, I'm not kind of necessarily going to be in these things. So we need that really good, solid, medium, um, budgeted um, TV for, for everyone to just enjoy. When, they call it blue sky shows. And it's really lovely to be in a positive, beautiful, sunny, shiny blue sky show. I mean, I imagine the show will be later this year that we can look forward to that. Or do we not know no, yet? Yeah, we haven't been given a date yet. But I, I mean, I would imagine that as soon I mean. I was going to say as soon as it starts getting a bit miserable here, but it's miserable now. <laughs> it's definitely not coming out now. Um, but yeah, I think it's towards that. I think it's definitely this year, but when, but when, I don't know. Now, obviously, we've talked about, you know, some of your projects, but for you, what is your proudest um, achievement career-wise? Your, your, the, the project that you just felt the most connected to, that you just felt the proudest of? It's really hard because um, every job has a different... Um, um, advance, not advantage, but, but but winning factor to it. The job where I worked, oh, there's quite a few. So there's a job called Ordinary Lies, which was, you know, people watch, but it it's not kind of stand out. But for me as an actor, where I went, the work that I did on that is probably one of my proudest performances, I think, like where I go, I really feel like I got that character. I really felt like it was a really beautiful, detailed performance. No one would remember it, but I remember it for that. But then I also go, oh no, but then the detail I did, which was in Canada, which um, which ended up on Channel 5 here, but went out on CTV. I was leading that show and I was, I, I had an American accent and I had a gun and I was, you know, number one on the call sheet. And I was, you know, and it was, re that was really, Oh my god, that, that was a touch pe pinch me, not touch me moment, a pinch me moment. I've just gone, I can't believe that I'm in, you know, North America, Canada, doing this show, living in Toronto. Um, but then Waterloo Road, you know, getting to head up Waterloo Road and play that character and really be able to get under her skin is also every job. Every job has something. Cutting it, I met really ace mates on cutting it. We had such a laugh. The social scene behind that was incredible. Down to earth, you know, I was in, I was in Devon. They've, every job that comes along, and maybe this is what I'm just like as a, with my personality as well, is whatever I'm in at that moment is the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so I just go, oh my God, this is the best job I've ever done in my entire life, ever. I've loved doing the wives. But it's, I think you just, when you're in it, you get so absorbed in it all and it is just the best thing that's ever happened and then you move on to the next job so yeah now obviously being on radio we have to talk about your radio 2 show i mean how did that come about because you are just so natural your voice really lends to that really relaxed calm environment mm -hmm. and i mean how did that come about 
Yeah, um, so I think probably where it came about, so I had a chat show once called Angela and Friends on Sky, um, on Sky One, and I presented the one show, and I presented the National Lottery years ago, so, I've got, so presenting's always kind of been there in my, on my CV, in my DNA, because I really love doing it. And I think that there was just a pitch going on at Radio 2 for a Sunday night show. And it was, I think it was COVID actually. So I had my studio because because um, I do voiceovers. My husband does voiceovers. So we created a studio in our um, cupboard. And um, they there was a company and they were pitching for a show. And they I literally, just through my agent, got sent like a two page treatment of, would you be interested? We've kind of done some research on you and we've put together what we think would be the show, which feels like it's yours. Would you be interested? And I read it and it was like, that, yeah, that's that. You've done really good research because, yeah, that's that would, if I was going to present the show, that would be the show. Just chilled out, brilliant, lovely, gorgeous tunes, really relaxing. Um, just that thing to be able to chill out, whether you're walking the dog or having a bath or just, you know, get home from work and just need that kind of little hour to just reset yourself. Absolutely. So we recorded it, we pitched it, we didn't get it. <laughs> um, I think Dr. Dr. Range got the actual slot, the, the weekly Sunday night slot, but um, Helen, um, the, uh, who uh, uh, runs Radio 2, was like, we really love the pitch, but we just thought maybe we could just do a little mini series of it. So we did four episodes that went out over August. And then I got a phone call that went out in the August and I got a phone call in the January. So I'd been in then and, and done a bit of depping as well for Steve Wright. God rest his soul, um, oh, for Sunday Love Song. So I was still kind of having conversations with Radio 2 and, you know, I was in the building. And then I just got a phone call from Helen going, do you fancy having the weekly show? We've kind of come to the end of the show that's on there and we'd really love to put on wines in that slot. And it was like, yeah, the power of yes. That's, what, that's how I'm on Radio 2. The power of yes. When someone offers you something, just say yeah and work out how you're going to do it later. I mean, we're must, talking about him. We must talk a bit about Steve Wright. I mean, I had the pleasure of meeting him and interviewing him, which for, for me was an honour because he didn't do many interviews. Um, but, I mean, did you get to meet him? What, what was he like to you? Oh, he was lovely. He was lovely because I was crapping myself, I'm going to be honest. So when I do um, uh, Unwinds, it's pretty much pre-recorded. I've done some live, but it's pretty much pre-recorded. Then all of a sudden it was, would you like to depth for Steve Wright? Love songs. And it was like, oh, yeah. Um, and it, and sometimes love songs was pre-recorded. So I, in my head, so like, oh yeah, I can do that. I know exactly how to do that. Pre-record it. They went brilliant. So we'll see you on Sunday morning if you can get here for eight o'clock. It's like whoa, 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 what? What do you mean come here? Like yeah, yeah, we, we're going to do it live. So presenting Steve Wright's Sunday love songs live was my first foray into um, into live radio. And he was there when I went in because I had to go in and have a practice to kind of just become familiar with the studio and he just sat me down and and kind of went through everything with me and just gave me confidence gave me advice um was so chilled and was just like listen you'll be absolutely fine just know what you want say what you want be clear about what you want and he was like oh all right then okay 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 so um so yes yeah, so I did I did get the pleasure of meeting him and he was just really really kind and really supportive and exactly who you would expect him to be in the face of, you know, some girl coming in who, who has never presented live radio before being chucked at the biggest show in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I just want to say it's been a pleasure talking to you, but before we go, is there any messages you'd like to give to the amazing, you know, NHS staff that are working tirelessly um, and also to the patients who are listening in hospital? Absolutely. Listen, it's, Life is full of ups and it's full of downs. You can't appreciate the ups unless you have the downs and you can't appreciate the downs unless you have the ups. So everything always changes. Like the one thing that you can guarantee in life, everything does change. Hang on in there. Be positive. Frame a mind. I know sometimes it's hard. If you're having a crappy time, take that time, have that day. And then the next day, it's a new day and, and positivity. And for the staff, just the same for the staff, really. I think you're bloody amazing. Really think you're amazing. Thank you. Angela, it's been an absolute pleasure. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you for giving me the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>